Hey everyone, I'm Bubba. I'm the owner of Exodus Jeeps, where we will where we build badass Jeeps. Today we've got a Jeep in for coilovers, so we're gonna go through and talk about the pros and cons of coilovers, why you should or shouldn't have them. So let's get to work. So one of the biggest questions that we get hit with at the shop is, what kind of lift should I put on my Jeep? And there's so many different factors that play into that. Brand. Press the Apple thing. Quality. Price. I mean, there's just, I can't even list them all, right? So, but we occasionally get hit with a customer that wants a coilover suspension. And today I'm going to talk about what exactly is a coilover suspension. Let me start with the very definition of what a coilover is. It's it's exactly what it sounds like. What do they look like? So the coil springs are over the shock. They're in the computer? So instead of a conventional suspension setup, or what I would call a conventional setup, is we typically have a coil spring right here, and then a separate shock mounted over here. Reservoir, hat, upper spring, lower spring, slider, Timing rings, can you see the timing rings in there? There's two of them, right here, timing rings. We have remote reservoirs, which is what this is with a hose, and then we have piggybacks, which is what's on the rear. Piggyback reservoir right Piggy there. Piggyback reservoir. The benefit of a coilover, one of the pros is that by combining the two, the customer can get all the flexibility out of it without having to worry about unseating the coil spring. So let's say if you had a shock that was had so much travel that it actually exceeded the travel of the spring itself in here, this isn't going to allow that to unseat and cause some damage on a trail. We've seen it in the past where the customer has too long of a shock, overextends, spring pops out, and then we got a big mess we're trying to fix on the trail. Uh, it usually involves a high lift jack or something like that. Number one great thing about a coilover is it's all self-contained and it will not cause any damage on the trail. All right, let's move on. Let's talk about some of the other things that uh, make it really great. Adjustability for ride height. So uh, I'll give you an example. This is an Evo Bolton coilover kit. We have anywhere between two to five inches of lift that we can adjust to the customer. So sometimes customer comes in and they're just starting out this is a great suspension because they don't really know what they're doing yet and they start out on 35s. They may end up on 40s someday, but the great thing about a coilover suspension is if that's the case, they never have to change the suspension. We can just add preload here and raise the Jeep up to accommodate the larger tire size. And if we do that, then we just make some adjustments on the control arms to correct caster and pinion angle. So it's a really great flexible in terms of what you're going to do with the Jeep down the road suspension. Then there's also the tunability. So say a customer adds or reduces weight to the Jeep as they're progressing through their build, sometimes the system, the springs and the, and the shock setup is going to change with it. Well, instead of having to buy all new shocks and springs, we can simply go in and make some different, some spring rate changes here to accommodate the new setup. So this coil over here doesn't have it, but you can also get them with compression adjusters on the reservoirs and that's going to allow you to soften or, or um, firm up the ride as well. So if you go off road, you want a little bit softer um, ride for that day, you can, you can back them all the way off and it won't uh, give you as much pushback. Coilovers have a lot of flexibility in, in terms of tuning them to the vehicle itself. So that's another great reason why we like it. For guys that off road a lot, you're going to want a softer spring rate. These springs right here, I believe these are 250 over 250. For a guy that's going to be off-roading a lot, we may go with something like a 150 over 200, something like that. So it'd be a little bit less firm than, say, a guy that's on the highway a lot. He's going to want a, a more firm spring rate in there uh, to offer more stability. One of the other great pros of the coilover itself is the serviceability. So this is pretty much a lifetime shock. So if, if usually, I want to say about every two years or 20, 30,000 miles, you're gonna to wanna to take these off, break them down, and have them rebuilt. Just like you would any shock that over time, the oil inside of it is gonna break down. You wouldn't believe how much that the oil inside these break down until you take one apart. Brand new, the, the oil, the shock oil that's in them is typically like a golden color, very clear. You can see right through it. 
by the time these things get about 15, 20, maybe even 30,000 miles on it, depending on how you drive them, you take these apart and rebuild them, you pour it out, it looks just like burnt motor oil. I mean, imagine the shock or the shaft going in and out, there's so much. I mean, heat and friction break down oil in these just like it does anything else. So they need to be serviced. The great thing about it is, it costs about 150 bucks per shock for us to break these down, replace all the seals and oil in them, reassemble them, and put them back on the Jeep. So it's not like, yes, they do cost a lot of money up front, but over the life of the Jeep, um, you're not gonna have to buy a new coil over every two or three years, depending on how you drive it. Uh, you can just have it rebuilt. So that's a great plus to owning a coilover. So that being said, let's talk about some of the cons. In my opinion, there aren't many cons to the coilover itself. I think the biggest one I could think of is gonna be the price. It's probably gonna drive people away. They are a little bit more expensive or a lot, depending on how you, what size you get. These are two inch coilovers. You can go up all the way to four if you wanted to, depending on what kind of rig you got. But most guys are gonna be running twos on the jails, uh, the newer, newer vehicle, the new platform, probably two and a half. I think that, that the price is probably gonna be the biggest con that's gonna kind of push people back to a conventional setup. The other one is gonna be, is noisy. There, we do get a lot of complaints from customers that have never been around them in their Jeep. They tend to um, say that they're noisy. There's a couple things that we can do to mitigate that. We can put different sliders in right here. Uh, this is the section in between the two, the upper and lower springs. So this piece, this section right here, we can get a two piece from like all German motorsports that's gonna allow to twist as the springs compress, they wanna twist. Typically that noise that people hear are the springs themselves kind of popping as the springs compress and then unload again. So with an, with an AGM slider, you never really hear that. So that's one of the cons or one of the two cons that I can really think of that people wouldn't like about a coilover setup. I'm just gonna go over real quick some of the other characteristics of a coilover other than the springs being over the coil or the shock itself. You'll see here there are some rings. A lot of people don't know what these are. We see a lot of shops that install coilovers that never uh, touch these. Sometimes that we see them, they're way up here and they're, basically if they're not set somewhere kind of low towards the bottom of this thread, then they're not really doing their job. And that's, and where they get set is all dependent on, on how much preload or lift that is set on the coilover itself. What do they do is the coilover is being compressed and this slider moves up, it's going to hit here, it's gonna bottom out. It's gonna go from a dual rate to, to single rate mode, which means once this slider hits this timing ring, this upper spring uh, pretty much cancels out and all the way to the vehicle is now riding on this lower spring. So be very careful. If you're getting coilovers installed by a shop, make sure that they understand what this is and how it needs to be adjusted. So if they're, basically, if they don't know what that's about, they need to get educated real quick on it by somebody that does, or you need to take it to a different shop, somebody that knows how to adjust that and tune it to the Jeep itself. Again, you have what I call the hat, which is how you adjust preload. I personally don't like to see more than about two inches, about where this is at right now, a preload. If you got more than that, then I feel like a spring rate needs to be changed uh, to suit that Jeep. I also don't like when I see a coilover that has no preload on it. I like to see somewhere between one to two inches of preload on a coilover. Uh, that just means that it's, in my opinion, being it has some adjustability in it. So if we need to make some sort of lift height or uh, ride height adjustment, then we have plenty there to work with. And then there's also the reservoir. So you have remote reservoirs and you have piggyback reservoirs. On this setup here, you'll see in the, in the video, the front has what we call the remote reservoir, which has a hose. Uh, and Evo set this up to where the, the reservoir will mount right here to the bracket that the coilover is mounted to. In some cases, um, customers want us to mount them a little differently. So we'll weld tabs on the frame right here. We'll kind of reload that reservoir right there. And then the other difference um, is the piggyback, which you'll see on the back of the Jeep, is basically built in right to the top of the shock itself, the head. Um, it comes off and the, and the reservoir is built in, and that keeps things kind of tight and compact. Uh, but you can't really do a piggyback on the front um, due to the, the wheels or the tire possibly coming in at full turn and rubbing the reservoir. So for that reason, we do a remote reservoir on the front. So, all right, that's all I got to say about that. That's all I have to say about that. I dress myself in cashmere! Woo! <laughs>
Deep If you don't want to miss any of Bubba's builds, adventures, or tips, click here to subscribe and click here to watch another video. Stay tuned.